Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special dual episode of the Purpose Up podcast and the Evolved Man Masterclass. Today, I am more than fired up to have with me the legendary John Joseph. Welcome, John. Just having in. Legendary, I don't know about that, but... Uh, You're a legend. I'm going to call I'm it right still here. still here. <laughs> you are still here. So um, I'm going to give you a little little introduction. You're you're a, you're a legend in the punk scene, right? I mean, you've been around forever. Uh, you're vegan. You're triathlete. You do so much good in the community. Um, what else? What what have I missed in the in the brief overview of who John well, Joseph I wrote, is? I wrote a couple of books. That's right. Uh, Me is for pussy. Actually, my third book. I wrote my uh, memoir called "The Evolution of a Cro Magnon," which I just featured. Uh, wrote the feature film for and uh, and uh, and then I wrote me to some pussies and now I just finished a book on mindset uh, on PMA uh, positive mental attitude kind of what if anybody read the teachings of Napoleon Hill but right. for me I was introduced to it through the bad brains who I worked for back in 81 HR the singer was the first person to ever put a mic in my hand and uh, you know, so I owe a lot to them and, and it's all about, um, uh, paying it forward. I just started talking with, uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Paul de Gelder. He's the, uh, special forces, uh, clearance diver who had his arm and leg taken off by the bull shark in Sydney. He's an right. Australian special ex special forces and wrote a book called No Time for Fear. And he does, uh, he's vegan now, does shark conservation uh, to save the oceans. Uh, so we've been talking about doing, uh, you know, a documentary together. Well, that's awesome. I wanna, you know. there's, there's so much stuff in there. So let me, let me just ask you a couple of follow-up questions. So in the, in the movie version of your life, who, who do you want to play you? Who can, who can live up to you? It ain't going to be no fake-ass Hollywood. Can I curse? Yeah, go for it. It ain't going to be no fake-ass <laughs> Hollywood, motherfucker. That's, you know, it's, uh, it, the story's told in three segments. Yep. You know, so there's... Uh, there's there's young you, middle you, and then... Stuff, and then the teenage stuff on the streets of New York leading up to getting incarcerated, and then it picks up... Uh, with the crow mags and, and basically right before uh, leading into my insane two year drug run uh, that I had of addiction and, and basically was almost killed several times and, and how so, I overcame all of that. So, yeah, let, let's, let's take a step back there just to your, your backstory. Cause it's, it's crazy, right? You grew up in like foster homes and. Yeah, well, uh, it was, uh, you know, I was actually, I didn't even find out till I was 40 uh, that uh, actually my mother had left my father when she had only the first kid and, and um, he broke in and raped her twice. So I was conceived out of a rape. What? Uh, and my younger brother as well. And then she was 21 years old with three kids and he would just break in and steal, you know, take her money and beat her up. So she became depressed and taking medication, tried, right. tried to kill herself. And they, they took us away and, and, and uh, separated us. And, and, you know, me and my younger brother, we ended up in orphanages and then separate foster homes. So the one that my older brother was in, the guy was uh, molesting the children. So then they put us all in one home where similar shit was happening, but at least we were together and we overcame it. And, and, um, you know, and so, yeah, we, we, we grew up uh, seven years in almost seven years in this one house where they fucking fed us Oreo spit sandwiches and abused us and, and, uh, physically, mentally. And, um, you know, and I said that in my book, if you keep beating a dog, the dog's going to become one mean, aggressive motherfucker. And that's what happened with us, especially me. I went on to the streets because uh, we got bounced around. They, the state closed. We, 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 um, we, say, we made a diary of everything they did to us. Right. 
for all those years, but we thought we were going to get to go home with my mother and, and it just never happened. And then we just gave the diary in to get out of there. And uh, then, you know, we went into other homes and then I ended up in a boy's home in Rockaway and left there in the winter of 77, like January right. onto the streets and then got caught up in all kinds of craziness. New York City in 1977, do the math, hustle, you know, drug mule, fucking just the craziest shit that people read the book and they thought I made the shit up until they called my mother and she was like, everything in that book happened, you know, and it, it, so I, you know, I ended up um, like uh, uh, over a year on the street and, uh, in that time, crazy shit went down. I was selling drugs and got shot with a twenty two and uh, just you know that's what New York was about, but I was also had a reputation of it if you fucked with me on the street, I would put a pipe across your face i didn't I was like you know after being having no control over what was done to me as a kid, right as soon as I started to develop you know, working out and, and, and getting strong and stuff like that. I, and even if somebody was bigger than me, I would hit you with a brick or hit you with a pipe or whatever. It took because you're on the streets and you, you got to do what you got to do, right? You know, locked up, it was the same thing. You know, I was in Spofford in the Bronx. I was the only white kid in the whole facility and people were going to try to test you the first Day I walked, the first hour I was in there, in indoctrination, somebody fucked with me. And then I had to hit him with a chair and, and, and to gain respect. Uh, it's just been like that for a long time. And I had a lot of anger issues because of what was done. Yeah. And the fact that I never knew my mom's story, which she was severely abused um, by my father. And I just, till I kind of squashed it out with her, uh, I mean, I, and that didn't even happen until I kicked drugs in, in, in the eighties. So it, I, it was like open wounds constantly and, uh, you're going to self-medicate, you're going to do whatever you got to do. And then, you know, I, I, I even had been a monk for two years from, from 82 to 84 and, um, I hired a Krishna monk and that, you know, they were doing crazy shit, and it was. Um, what were the crazy shit the monks were doing? Oh no, not the monks. The leaders of the Hare Krishna movement. Oh, okay. They were fucking, you know, stealing millions of dollars, molesting kids. It's insane shit. And when I found out about it, I went on the war path against them, and have been since the eighties. But. Um, but you gained you like know, some some like spiritual awareness out of that, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. I still, I mean, I still got my beads and I still chant every day and I still read Prabhupada's books because he's the real deal. And it's just these leaders that tried to falsely take his place. Right. All full of shit. And still, and still are. So, uh, you know, but it was just, it really took uh, a lot of healing on my part to, you know, to really put behind the, the past and heal the wounds. And, and that's what I try to do now. A lot of people have a lot of deep, dark shit that they went through in their lives in this day and age. I mean, look at this family that just, you know, he had 13 kids and chained them up and fucking yeah, that's the dogs better, you know. Out of control. So there's some crazy shit go that goes down, and I just try to uh, utilize and teach people what helped me to help them. So that's where I'm at at this point, and that's why, it's, to me, it's the plant-based do no harm, ahimsa life, and and, and, uh, and training, and, and all of that stuff. Philosophy comes into play, and that's what I write about in my new book, which is going to be on PMA and 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 the tools and, and I picked the brains of like special forces guys and you know, my buddy who's a seal and, and just all kinds of different people to what makes them tick, what 
puts them in the top of the food chain, that top 5% of men and women who just under any and all circumstances get their shit done. So yeah, I want to, I want to talk about some of that book. Cause it's got like so much rich stuff in it. Like I'm a, I've been plant-based for about four years now. And I think, you know, that a helps you be really healthy and B helps you think about what you eat and not worry about, you know, animal suffering, which I think, you know, we need to think about animal rights. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to talk about that top performing stuff. So let, let's talk a little bit about like the, the plant-based lifestyle and, and the meat is for pussy stuff. So I know there's, there's all the literature about how it's better for you. Tell me a little bit about how it's helped you perform uh, physically. Um, well, I mean, you know, eating plants, you're going to have less acidity in the body, less inflammation on a plant-based diet. You recover quicker from training. I started doing Ironmans. I did 10 of them and a couple of Olympic distance. I did Kona two years in a row, 17 in 2016. Um, and, um, you know, so it's, it, it helps, uh, performance, but I think more importantly than anything, man, it helps your consciousness when you don't subscribe to the pain and the torture. And it's, I just heard, I forget which, it was like one of the rappers that's out there now. And he was like, he's plant-based. It's one of the Wu-Tang dudes. Right. And he was like. You're eating, when you eat that animal, you're eating every second of torture that that animal lived. You're consuming that. Right. And especially like when they're, when they're being like executed like that, all the chemicals that are rushing into their body about, it's like you're eating betrayal and you're eating like terror. Of course, just like we have adrenaline, they have a they have an enzyme, uh, you know, that they release as well due to fear. Animals... I mean, we just rescued a pit bull, man. If you're going to tell me an animal don't have a fucking soul, when this dog looks at you and he knows you saved his ass from dingy, dark fucking hallways, I mean, they chained him up. He has a fucking big scar from trying to break loose. Like, they just left him there. And, and we took him from somebody who was doing the same thing, but uh, we don't even know where he was before that. Somewhere in Brooklyn where they just breed out these pit bulls and tie them to a fucking post somewhere to die. And, um, you know, the animal has a soul, man. That fucking cow, that sheep, all those animals know they're going to be fucking killed. And I just, I, I don't, all I try to do is, and this is what works. Right. I don't try to preach to nobody and I don't try to speak out of my own realm of experience. But in my book, I say I was the most violent motherfucker. And anyone who knows me, and I'm not bragging about it, from the streets of New York, from the 70s to the 80s, I had a reputation on the streets. Right. And it's because, you know, I had that, those, all that anger and pent up aggression and, and consuming fucking dead animals, it, it added to it. The minute I stopped, and that was due to the bad brains that pump man. The bad brains gave me a job. I lived in their studio. They got me a job at the health food store. Right. And it was under the term, you know, the prerequisite was you could come on tour with us, but you can't eat meat. You can't do drugs. You can't drink. You can't do any of this bullshit you're doing now. Just give it a chance and see what it does for you. And that's what I tell people. Give it a chance and see, stay sober. Sobriety is a big part of the whole thing too, because when you're getting drunk and, and drugged up, you don't give a fuck about what's going in your body. That's when your bad choices are being made. Right. You're walking out of a bar and the dude with the fucking horse dick schism cart fucking shish kebab motherfucker <laughs> out there because he knows that your judgment is compromised and you're going to eat that shit at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Right. You know, they know what... They, if you really start to investigate where that food's coming from, what that animal, why you think they, they, why do you think they move the animals at night to the slaughterhouse? They don't want you to see the faces of those fucking animals that they hide the death in this country they, and around the world so that you have no clue. You know, I was just talking to this guy uh, the other day and he's from Ireland and, and he's been following me. His name is Robert. He's the uh, security guy for, um, uh, Christie's, the, the, the auction house. And, right. and, I, and I, you know, I go up and I collect 
sometimes for this uh, soup kitchen at Rockefeller Center. And he's a cyclist, so he's we got to meet and talk, and then he started following me. He came to some of my book readings, and he was like, you know what hit me? It was the way you talk about the animals and their personality and the soul. And we had this cow when I was a kid in Ireland, and I fell in love with this cow. Right. And 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 it was something you reminded me of something from my childhood, and that was I came home one day and the cow was gone. And I was like, what happened to the cow? Where's the cow? And his father said, we sent them to the slaughterhouse. And the kid and Robert was just, you know. Heartbroken. Yeah. It's like, it's like these animals have personality and souls. And that's why Gene Bauer in the farm sanctuary and, and, and even John Stewart now has a farm sanctuary in Jersey since he stopped. And you go and meet these animals, man you're not going to eat them fucking, you're not going to eat the meat coming from those animals when you get to interact and see how amazing these animals are. But they just keep us in this concrete jungle where you don't see where your food's coming from, what it is, any of this shit. You just go and it's all in fucking nice packages and fucking, and then you go and you're eating fast food. You don't even equate that like, yo, where the fuck did this food come from? Every yeah. food has a, all your food has a past. So I just try to relate of what my own experience was. And that was something clicked inside of me at, when I took that first step to not eat any animals or any of that stuff or fish or eggs or any of it. Right. And when yeah, I switched I can... my eating to the mode of goodness, there's three modes of nature, right? There's Tamagoon, Rajagoon, Satchagoon. So Tamagoon is the mode of ignorance. That's dead, decaying, rotting corpses, eggs, liquid flesh, all this shit. And then there's foods in the mode of passion, spicy, hot meats and all this crap. And then there's food in the mode of goodness, which sustain life. Fruits, vegetables, legumes, beans, rice, all of this grains right. that give you health. So once I switched to the mode of goodness, everything else followed after that. I started reading books on philosophy, like doors just opened in, in my consciousness. But that, so that, that so was the first step. That was a gateway to your, to your healing and your evolution. And I still, I'm, still, I'm still a work in progress. I never say, oh, I'm cured of everything. I, <laughs> you know, you, you, you're in the material world, you know? You, you, you got issues. If you're on this planet, you got issues. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. Right. And but yeah. We're here to work our shit out. And Prabhupada, who wrote those books, said, this is like the outpatient program to the, to the, to the insane asylum. <laughs> this is where you can, you know, by getting this knowledge and this information on the higher self, you can, you can work your way out of hell. And that's what I'm, what I've done and what I'm still doing and family members, uh, I, you know, just still dealing with all of that. Like, you know, my brothers, you know, one went vegan and one's a drug addict. That's almost died a half dozen times. I mean, I did my, my second Ironman and he was on his deathbed in a, in a coma down. And I was when I went and did Cabo Ironman and they didn't tell me till after the race. But it's like, and he was in a coma for a month from drugs. So it's like every one of us is dealing with shit. Right. Men, men, and, and men, the problem, women are a little more easier to acknowledge like, all right, I, I, I need help. I, let me reveal myself. But this whole macho bullshit where like, you're not yeah. going to tell nobody and, and you're just going to keep shit inside. That's the time bomb waiting to go up. That's why I got that tattoo. When I was in the military, they had me see a psychiatrist. And when I was locked up, I saw a psychiatrist for the whole 21 months I was incarcerated. Right. Because they knew this dude's, and the Navy said I was a time bomb waiting to go off. And every one of us is like that. It could take the smallest thing to set us off. And um, I mean, I would beat people. And I wasn't a bully, but I, if somebody fuck with me or my friends, that's the way I roll. Don't start none, there won't be none. That was the law of the streets. But right. if you fucked with us, then I would, I would beat you. However, 
it had, you know, and it's not something I'm proud of. It's just something would snap. And I had more control over, you know, what I was doing in my life when I started meditating and going to yoga and, and started eating a plant-based diet and all that stuff. It's not that I would let people walk on me today, but, you know, that's one of the things in, in this whole path is being able to reveal your mind and confidence to somebody else and say, yo, I need help. Reach out, reach out and get help. All this suicide and all this, you know, and it's sad because my brother's committing suicide uh, by by drugs, you know, slow, slow death. Like he don't want to, he don't want to acknowledge and face his demons of what happened in the past. So this is how he chooses to, you know, kill himself slowly. And yeah. there's a lot of people dealing with that now. No, I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, I, I think the thing is, it's like, yeah, you can, you can like let the pain out and shine light on it, or you just keep it down and, and you numb it. But that strategy just doesn't work. Nah, it's just, it's boiling underneath, man. And, uh, you know, that's why I've developed, a, a, you know, a lot of good friendships over the years and, uh, and help a lot of people and always reach out and help people like, you know, people, I speak at prisons and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I try to get out there and, and there's always hope, man. That's what I try to tell people. Like, you know, as long as you're breathing and you're above ground, there's hope for you. There was hope for me. There's hope. You know, there was this magazine called Satya, and I was just telling Paul the Gelder about this. And this guy was an inner city guy. Okay. And uh, African American. And I'm assuming because he got 25 to life that he killed somebody. And he was in prison and he became a vegan and a Buddhist in prison. And he, they wrote a magazine on him called Satya. Okay. There was a magazine called Satya that had an article that I read about him about 10 years ago. And he said that if I had access to this knowledge out, outside in the world, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Right. You know? And I think that's why I try to reach out no matter where people are at and work with them where they're at. And, and uh, I, I've spoken at gang high schools all over the city through the Healthy School Food Coalition and Teachers actually asked me, hey, man, can you come and speak to the kids in my school? They're fucking buck wild. And uh, I have an effect because I walked in, the, you know, I walked in their shoes. I've been there, you know. It's a lot, it, it, in a lot of cases, I've had a more horrific upbringing in life than they did. So, oh. and I was able to work out of it. Look what I'm doing now. I travel all over the world, still playing music, doing Ironmans all over the planet helping people, putting books, writing film, writing books, and writing music. So, I mean. Living the dream. Yeah. And I used to live the nightmare, but, you know, it's, it's you know, I had a dream the other night. I told my girl that I fucking woke up. I, I smoked crack in my dream. Right. You, you know? woke up being like, who? Like, I was like, yo. Because I was. When I was doing that shit, and I started out freebasing the wealthy white man high, you know, and then when the money ran out and the fucking bridges got burned, then you right. know, crack. And I was robbing drug dealers in New York City. I had KOSs on my head, kill on sight for robbing people. I robbed this Colombian dude, threw him out of my car at 50 miles an hour. You know, a war from the Navy, war federal warrants, guns in the car, like just crazy shit, like absolutely insane. And you know, th the fact that I'm still alive, I never take for granted. It's amazing. I wanna, I wanna hit some of the points that you talked about in your transition um, after you started eating healthy. That like introduced you to. Um, spirituality and you started doing yoga and meditation. Um, can you talk a little bit about the transition into some of those practices and how they helped you out? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, just sitting down and quieting the mind and, and, and being an observer that, you know, that's one of the, 
terms that you learn when you get into yoga is a humbramasmi that I'm spirit, I'm not the body. So if I'm not the body and I'm not the mind and I'm not the senses, who the fuck am I? People right. don't stop to ask these simple questions. I'm saying my hand, my elbow, my head. Like who is the person possessing these things? And all of that, if you go through analytically and study it, that you are the consciousness within the body. And what are you doing for that is the question. What do you do on a daily basis to help that grow? Everybody's into fitness and growing their muscles. What are you doing to grow in your mind? What are you doing to further the advancement of your consciousness and your soul? And when I started doing yoga and you would sit there and meditate and you know, do the yoga. And then I got into Hare Krishna and, uh, and the chanting is very powerful and performing activities of bhakti devotion all day, going out, feeding the homeless, going out, uh, distributing uh, the literatures, which this was the first book I ever got from Prabhupada, The Science of Self-Realization. All right. What is the self? You know, and it's the same thing. It breaks it down. And... You know, we, we have to be good to ourselves, man. And, and then the question is, all right, how do we do that? What's the proper way? So the first thing I did was stop doing the drugs, stop the drinking, stop the smoking, meditate, exercise, eat a plant-based diet, uh, do my spiritual work on myself. Even to this day, every single morning that I wake up, I touch my head to the floor and say mantras and give thanks. And start my, and I talk about this in the new book. You want to start every single day in a positive way, man. Right. Not going to your computer seeing who talks shit about you on Facebook or whatever. That's all bullshit. It's like, there's real, you know, issues that we, we need to be confronting and dealing with. Right. And I think like, yeah. to that end, when you give yourself some time to clear your head in the morning, get in touch with like who you are and, and practice that gratitude. Like you were saying, it gets you. You know what I say? Gratitude equals attitude. You know? Yeah. You roll with the positive attitude, then you're going to have gratitude. Like I went from getting fed, having to steal the dog's food and in that foster home and eating Oreo spit sandwiches and being starved to like eating the best food there is on the planet like organic plant-based food. And it's like, I don't take that for granted, you know, like it's, you know, it's, it's from where, if you look from where I came to where I am now, it's like the arc of, you want you know, good stories about the arc of a character. It's like, I did a complete 180. Got one of the biggest arcs ever. Yeah. But it's like that, took every single day of doing shit to, to work on myself. And like I said, I'm still, I'm still doing it. And every day I realize I'm fighting addiction every single day. Like having that crack dream was just a reminder of that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, the crack was good in the dream, you know? So there's still a part of me that's like, could go off the rails. Yeah. When you're an addict, you're an addict for life. You're just choosing to not use today. So that's what I choose to do. I choose to wake up, say my prana mantras, you know, go do my juice, uh, eat my good food, exercise, look to help other people. How can I, how can I be of service is the important issue. It's not just about us. That's my problem with the vegan world. It's all rich motherfucking white people. You go to a fucking plant-based conference or a fucking veg fest, 30 fucking $40 to get in. Right. It's becoming this elitist shit. And that's why the film that I'm doing is, is, is coming back to the attitude of service to people. And the ones that really need it the most. The ones who are being lost to the crime and the drugs and the fucking gangs of the inner city. How do we reach those kids? We're losing that generation. So that's, you know, I'm going to take my formula and go into the fucking trenches with them and say, yo, 
let's make this shit happen, you know? And, and that's what it's all about. And, and you know, it, 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 it's my life is about service. And I understand that. That's what bhakti yoga teaches is that you pay it forward every day. Prabhupada didn't need to come here at 70 years old to America and, and because his teacher in India said, go help people in the West. And he, if you watch a documentary called Your Ever Well Wisher mm -hmm. on YouTube, you'll have tears in your eyes for what he did. And he was a humble man. He slept on the floor. He had no possessions, no bank account. He cooked, fed, and cleaned before he took one grain of rice. That's how humble he was. So acharya means one who leads by example. So when I saw Prabhupada's example, I said, I'm going to follow that person. And I still follow, you know, as much as I can to this day. I'm not a monk, but I mean, you try to adhere to the principles of, of what he established. And the main thing is service. How do I help other people? Yeah, uh, I think that that's beautiful. So I mean, just a follow-up question to how do you, how do you bring like the plant-based, um, how do you bring the plant-based uh, way of being to, to other people that, you know, uh, you know, don't have access or, you, you know, give may them access, you teach them how to do it and you give them access. There's plenty of organizations out there. I work with an organization called the healthy school food coalition. They teach okay. people how to do organic gardens and on the rooftops and, and, and in schoolyards and, and all kinds of stuff. And you know, where there's a will, there's a way there's a saying. Yeah. Where there's a will, there's a way. First, get the will. Understand what this could do for you. Then let's figure out how to make that shit happen. That's what I did. I had a ton of people, even when I wrote my first book, and I always bring this up. One person who I was very good with, friends with, her father's a famous writer, wrote all these big time movies and books. Right. She said, oh, what makes you think you're going to get your book done? My father can't even get his new book out. I said... When somebody tells me I can't do something, that fucking lights a fire under my ass. And then I got the cover of all these newspapers about my book. And I, and I called her up and said, hey, did you see? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. That's so great. I said, you know, you're my friend. You were supposed to encourage me to get it done, not try to shoot down my dreams. But where there's a will, there's a way. I never gave up. That's the last thing I say in Evolution of the Cro-Magnon. You have to have the, the warrior's mentality is... I'm going to make this shit happen no matter what. And if you really want and have a desire, everything in the material world is based on desire. If I have a desire to do something, then I'm going to be put in the right path to make shit happen. And I can't even count the amount of times people were like, yo, I was meditating on that. And I thought, how am I going to make it happen? Then I met this person and that happened. It's the universe you know, Krishna, God, Allah, Jehovah, whatever the hell you want to call your higher power, don't matter. When right. you start taking one step towards that, Krishna takes 10 steps towards you to make things happen in your life. Yeah, the, the universe conspires. And that's that's it. Man proposes, God disposes. So <laughs> if you have a real urge to do this, you're going to figure out how to do it. And that's but, what I tell people. What are you spending your money on? First of all, let's let's talk about that. Where's your money going? You say you don't have money to eat. How much money are you spending on video games? How much money are you spending drinking? How much money are you spending on cigarettes and weed and video games and and all this other nonsense that ain't getting you nowhere? Right. How do we reallocate that money? And how do we figure out how to get a co-op going in the inner city where you could get organic food for one third the price? And, and how do we set up community gardens like this dude in Edgemere out Rockaway has? He does this whole huge lot, empty abandoned lot, does organic vegetables and all this stuff. And, and, and lets people come in and just take what they want. That's amazing. And the brother like that ran it, I asked him where he learned, and he wouldn't talk to me at first. <laughs> and then I found out, you know, dude was locked down and learned he was in the south and learned how to how to uh how to farm. Now he takes that knowledge and uses it to for good, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, that's what I, I, I try to do the same thing, you know, but 
giving people access, that comes one way. You give people the knowledge and then they will make it happen. You know, there's thousands of stories about people, their desire to do something and then the facility to make that happen was given to them. But you have to take the step. You have to say, all right, I'm not going to fucking get high. I'm not going to smoke blunts today and, and all this other bullshit that takes you away. It's everything in this material world these days. And I posted a video on Facebook today. Everybody's walking around with their fucking cell phones. There's no human interaction. It, it, it's just we're becoming like fucking robots. It's true. That's why there's all this animosity, these people against this people and these people. It's like everybody bleeds red, man. You know, nobody's the, the, the shell of us is the same, but spiritually on the spiritual platform, there's no man, there's no woman, there's no black, there's no white, there's no Hindu, there's no Muslim. The soul has none of those designations. Those are designations we place upon ourselves. Right. Spiritual essence and the platform of spirituality means nothing it's a joke you know so yeah no it's like we're, we're being pre-programmed by our phones to go against each other with like exactly uh, facebook media. and all this shit when i see it, you you post more than two fucking negative things and i'm blocking you i don't even want i don't got time for that shit man or or fucking motherfuckers that constantly post negative shit i just block yeah. motherfuckers on instagram twitter whatever the fuck I don't got time for it, man. I came from that shit. You want to step into that arena with me, then <laughs> it's not going to end well, you know? So I just don't, I got very good advice from one of the dudes in the cro and he said, don't even, just out of sight, out of mind, man. Let it go. You ain't got nothing to prove. Right. Not no false ego shit. Just do, do your thing, man. Keep, don't waste time on those people when your time should be allocated toward helping others. And that's, you know, that's what's up. I want to, so, I, I, I totally give agree. Give people the knowledge first and foremost. Right. Some people don't even know that this shit exists. That's, that's the real troubling thing. What do you mean by which, which? They don't even know what a plant-based diet or meditation or, or slowing the fuck down and getting drug free. And, and right. they have, so you have to, Give people the knowledge first. Yo, check this out. It's like you're thinking right brain, man. How, let's put some left brain shit in there and see what you could do. So a lot of people don't have the access is not the access to, to the facility and the material things to make it happen. The access is to that knowledge. That's the first thing that must be done. And I get, like I said, since I've been doing this thousands of, of emails and, and letters and people writing me and saying, Hey man, fucking, you know, you changed my fucking life. I said, no, you changed your life. All I did was put some knowledge in front of you that you didn't have access to just like people did for me. I'm just like the mailman. I didn't come up with the shit. I'm just <laughs> delivering the mail to you. It's up to you to open the letter and do what it says. You did that. So you get the credit you know yeah no that's beautiful that's beautiful um so i i i love the i love the sense of service that you have and and that your story and voice uh carries so much weight with it because so many people can identify with all that pain and all that struggle and maybe it wasn't as extreme but you know so many humans go through some shit they have to deal with and uh your voice is just so authentic one last thing I want to talk about is like your, your high performance now, right? The positive mental attitude plus the, uh, the athletic stuff that you do, you know, like try triathlons and all that stuff. So what's, what's the key to, to getting there? I mean, I've done, done one marathon personally, but how do you get people from eating well and thinking well to this like well-oiled machine? I mean, it's a gradual, it's a gradual process. I mean, and uh, I've been athletic, you know, most of my life, you, you know, when I was locked up, they had a boxing program, a sports program. I got involved in all that in the military, you know, I was such, by the time I got out of boot, I went in like they have a saying, when you get locked up, you got to get your weight up. So I went in 135 pound soaking wet 
street right. kid and came out 165 pounds of fucking muscle and steel. I've always been athletic. I just, I had a steel body, but I had an aluminum foil mind. That could <laughs> so I think, you know, even with the Ironman, um, it's a mindset. And, you know, they showed a, a, click, a, a quick clip of me when they just showed last month uh, the Iron Man and Kona, they showed it on NBC TV. Right. And when they had me, I was sitting there in a moment. Um, I have the photo too. It's on my Instagram. And I was sitting there and I just got out of the water and I had, I didn't even know the camera was there. I didn't even know that fucking they got the, the film footage of me because I, I came out of the water of the 2.4 mile swim and it was, I remember what I was thinking when I was getting ready to get on my bike. And it's like, wow, man, look how fucking far I came to be doing this race two years in a row now. I don't take that for granted. Right. The commentator for NBC Sports, right at that moment, his comment when they showed me standing there in deep thought, getting ready to get on the bike was no doctor can write a prescription for this. <laughs> and I was like, you're absolutely right. This takes work on yourself. You have to do this. And I'm not, I'm working with a coach now, but I did 10 Ironmans and two Olympics without even, and marathons without ever being coached at all or anything. I just had the desire to do it. And I went and did it. And even my first triathlon I ever did was an Ironman. And man, motherfuckers were like, hey, you know, you should try to do an Olympic perhaps first. And my coach <laughs> at the time, and he didn't coach me. He coached me through it, but didn't give me any training programs or training peaks or whatever the fuck, like what I'm doing now. Right. He helped coach me mentally through it. Orion Mims, six foot three, African American badass motherfucker boxer and he told the dude in the bike shop he's like motherfucker you don't know this dude <laughs> this guy's been through uh, iron man's a walk in the fucking park he's gonna get it done and shut you the fuck up and guess what i did my first iron man i went and did a show the night before in philadelphia which we got double booked the, the drummer booked us at a festival i drove back with a stress fracture in my fucking foot no sleep and went and did the Ironman in 95 degree August soaking humidity. And I got that motherfucker done. And I don't oh. care that it took me 13 hours to do it. I did it. And that's really what it's about. And, and when you have the desire, then you figure out, okay, how do I do this? I have this desire. How do I map out a plan? And I talk about this in my new book. Right. And it's, that's why if you look right here, what I have is a motherfucking cork board and everything that I'm plotting to do or films or books or whatever, right. that's where it goes. You have to be able to visualize the goal and then you take the steps to make the shit happen. Whether I'm writing a film or a book or whatever, or just recipes, uh, I'm doing a cookbook now too. So, you know, it all starts based on desire and now I desire to get better after 10 doing, you know, 10 Ironmans. I'm like, all right, it's time to start bringing the times down a lot and try to start placing in my age group. Right. Respectively clean, not taking any fucking hormones or HGH or fucking testosterone or the shit. These other people are fucking taking because they get a doctor's prescription. I'm not doing any of that. Right. You know, I'm doing my shit clean drug-free, 100%, plant-based. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's how you make it happen, man. It, it, everything starts with the desire. But you have to be exposed to the knowledge first to, to start to – it's like a seed has to get planted. Prabhupada talks about that too. The seed of devotion gets planted, and then by activity and thought process, you water that seed. You give it nutrients and the seed grows into a tree that bears fruit, you know? So the, that's the importance of going out and waking people the fuck up. 
however it needs to get done. Yeah, everybody, a lot of people came down on the title of my book, Meet Us and Pussies, all the vegan feminists, ah, you know, had me blocked from all the, <laughs> at the fucking plant-based festivals and all this shit and wrote the publisher and like, just, but you know what? You can't stop an idea whose time has come and it, it's time and people are waking the fuck up. I don't come from where you come from. You couldn't walk a day in the fucking shoes that I did. So don't try to comment on how I do shit. I'm not no. calling you a fucking pussy if you eat meat. I'm saying if you continue to lead a sedentary lifestyle and eat this abominable food, you will become a pussy dependent upon the pharmaceutical companies to keep you alive. That's right in the first pages of the book. If that's what you want, then... Return the book because it's not for you. This is to teach you how to break free from that. And this whole thing, masculinity, associating masculinity with eating meat and how tough it is and all this shit. What's tough about shitting in a colostomy bag? What's tough about your fucking junk not working? What's so tough about all of that? That's not tough. There's, that's not tough at all. And that's what's coming for you. You know, it's, you're like, you know, you're you're on the track and the train is just coming, man. And even even Bob Harper, the guy who did the biggest loser, he went, he got my book. I had I had fucking lunch with him in, in Angelica Kitchen and talked to him. And he went back to eating fucking meat and doing this whole paleo falio fucking bullshit. <laughs> fucking heart attack then he starts talking about genetics and i wrote him and he didn't write me back i said bro it ain't genetics i'm genetically disposed uh, predisposed to get a heart attack too my whole family of heart disease runs but right. heart disease runs in the family because nobody in the family runs except to the fucking dunkin donuts to get a fucking artery clogging fucking 12 pack of fucking donuts or some kfc nuggets if that's what you do, then you're going to get the disease. But I'm out there. My brother's on his deathbed how many times now, not just from the drugs, but the, even my older brother, he doesn't do drugs. He just had a fucking heart attack two years ago. And he's like, I want to be here for my son. And guess what? He watched Forks Over Knives. He's plant-based now. All right. So I'm doing one thing and somebody else at 55 years of age – you know, doing this shit. And, you know, I just do it to show that anybody could do it. And I said that when Vice filmed me for that documentary, I said, yo, people tell me, oh, I can't do it. I, I said, motherfucker, don't say that shit. You don't know what you're capable of because you didn't try. Right. But the first thing to do is to get that knowledge and the seed planted. And then every day you work on yourself. You, you water that seed. You work on yourself. And those fruits, that tree will grow. Those fruits will bear. You know? As a man, so what is it? What's the saying? As a man uh, sows the seed, so you're going to reap the reward, whatever the fuck. I'm not a Bible dumb I guy. <laughs> Couldn't tell you that one. As you sow, so shall you reap. Something whatever. Like that. But that's the whole thing, you know? It's, that's what I tell people. Like, you know, just... Get get into something. Look at that. Look at that. The no chin, uh, the missing chin run group or whatever the hell that that group of all those guys that were four hundred pounds and three hundred pounds and they lost all the weight, uh, and they were just on the Today Show and everything talking about plant based diet, what it did for them, you know. But where did they get the information? They watched Forks Over Knives. They watched What the Health. They watched Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. They watch these documentaries that's out there now that teach people how to cure disease. It's us against the pharmaceutical companies, man. That's really what it boils down to because they are fucking criminals. They've killed hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people with these drugs. They know these Oxycontins are fucking addictive. They made it that way. And then when you can't get the oxys, what do you do? You go to fucking heroin. Then you got to go through the drug treatment programs and get the methadone. Or, or you know, keep, keep the jails filled. Yeah, keep the jails filled. The jails are traded on Wall Street. See, that's the greatest fear. When you educate people, and that's what I want to do, you're getting, you're not filling a bed in the fucking prison, you know? 
and even the Clintons and all these motherfuckers that acted like they were for black people. Are you fucking kidding me? The whole, and even the Reagans say no to drugs. Bullshit. Your husband was bringing, with George Bush, was bringing the drugs into the country, landing it at a secret airstrip in fucking Arkansas to then bring the crack into the black neighborhoods. And then not only did they, uh, they funded all their shit down with the Contras and everything through that, but guess what? They invested in the prisons that were then going to lock those people up. So they're fucking fucking making money hand over foot. It's a scam. Everybody's being fucking scammed. And then the drugs, you know, heart disease, all this shit. Motherfucker, stop eating what the fuck you're eating and change your life. You don't need these drugs. Yeah. This, this whole medical system around the world now is all about treating disease and maintaining your disease till you die. How about curing the fucking disease? Where's that message? That message is in those films where those people got off all their meds and were crying and saved their life and what the health and forks over knives. And those movies touch people and they stop. What the health is having a huge impact. My boy Kip Anderson's film. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that and forks over knives, you know, I mean, I, I was already converted, but those, those kind of like help you get more converted. And then, uh, and they what's that other one? economic terrorism against the black people. Yeah. Where's those fucking pig farms and all this other shit? It's not going in fucking whitey's neighborhood. It's not going in rich white people's neighborhoods. It's right. going in fucking North Carolina in the hood, in, in the poor people's houses who don't have a fucking say, and they're spraying all these fucking poisons into the air, and they have to inhale them, and they're getting all this cancer, and, and these pesticides being used on the crops and all this shit. You know, the economically disadvantaged you're having to eat the shit because these industries are coming to their places and doing what the fuck they got to do. Look at it. They're destroying everything. They're destroying the fucking planet. Cowspiracy, man. Watch it. That's the truth. You want truth? Stop running from it and face it. Be a real fucking man. You want to talk about being a man? Stand up for the fucking, for what's right. You know, I've been doing this for 37 years and, you know, that's all truth passes through those phases, man. First, it's fucking first. It's it's ridiculed. Then it's violently opposed and then it's accepted as truth. And that's where we're at now. People are it, I've been the ridicule was there. Ah, yeah, fucking you fucking pussy. You fucking <laughs> don't eat meat. You're a fucking chump. It ain't more, you know, how are you going to fucking be a man? And then it's like violently opposed. It's, you know. And I think we're still at that point now. We're in between two and three because it's being violently opposed because there's a lot of industries who are hurting now, rightly so, fuck them, that's what I say, due to the fact that people are not eating the shit they're putting out there. They're not having to take the drugs to lower cholesterol or, or heart disease or get these procedures or any of this other shit. Reversing heart disease, read that book. You know, the cure is out there. The cure is in the plants, you know, and that's what they don't want you to know. And that's the real revolutionaries is, yo, go out there and educate people on what the fuck is going on. All and right. They become angry. They will become angry at what the fuck is being done. And that to me is like, that's when, that's when shit starts changing. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree 100% with everything that you're saying. And it's, uh, it's, it's up to us and, and people watching to, A, get out of denial, B, wake up, start, start living the, the, the right lifestyle to help, help change because if we don't do it, nobody else will. Exactly. It's not, it's, it's still a grassroots movement. It's about every one of us within our circle reaching those people and then they turn and reach people in their circle. That's, you know, the people that I've helped turn around and helped all their family and their friends and say, hey, man, check out what this motherfucker got to say. Watch this movie. Read this book. Go on this website and check, check out what's going on. You know? Yeah. That's, that's what it's all about. I mean, that's, that is what it's all about. So... Before we wrap Knowledge up. is the key, man. Knowledge is the key to everything. 
And it's We're, exposing people to the truth and the knowledge that's out there. You know? That's right. Otherwise, they're living in the dark, man. You know, and that that's where a lot of people are at. They, If you don't experience anything outside of your realm of experience, then you don't know that it exists and you compare everything to your... It's like the frog in the well philosophy. One frog gets out of the well, goes to the ocean and comes back and tries to tell the other frogs, yo, there's this vast body of water. And they're like, what? How big? What? Twice the size of the well? No, no, much larger. And they keep comparing it to their own experience. And that's spiritually too. You have to take action with your diet, with your consciousness, everything to experience things outside of your realm of experience. There's a lot of shit that once, if you don't keep the glass half full, you're, you're an idiot. Right. Sorry, but you see a lot of people that think they know everything and they're never going to grow, unfortunately. You know? It's true. But there's a whole set of, a whole different realm of experience out there waiting, man. You know, take that first step to educate yourself. Watch the movies I talked about. Read some books, you know. Get some philosophy. Try, give it up for a month. Try eating plant-based diet for a month. Do a little, yeah. wake up in the morning and meditate instead of jumping on your goddamn social media and fucking, you know, seeing what's uh, all over Facebook and all this other shit. Fuck all that. That's right. You know, wake up and read a damn book, man. Close your eyes for fucking 10 minutes and meditate on what the fuck you're doing in your life, where you're going. Slow down. Everything is speeding ahead, speeding ahead, speeding ahead. It's, it's all distractions from looking inside of ourselves. And that's why everybody's so empty and needs drugs and, and all these pharmaceuticals for depression, which may lead to suicide and all this. It's like, motherfucker, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm diarrhea. depressed. Now <laughs> I want to fucking you know, kill myself. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like... Dude, it's serious shit what these motherfuckers are getting away with in the pharmaceutical industry. Read, ec read Confessions of an Economic, uh, I mean, uh, Confessions of an RX Drug Pusher. Right. I mean, read what the fuck is going on, man. You know, the pharmaceutical companies, the, the, they're in bed with the fucking genetically modified food companies. They know this shit. It's bred to get you sick. Yeah. Pesticide use. They found a way to put pesticides inside the fucking seed, man. It's not whether genetically modified taking the trait of this or that. It's about chemical companies are making your fucking food. Yeah, it's chemical about companies have ties engineering to disease. They're engineering fucking disease. That's what it's all about. That's when you learn what all of that is going on then you'll start to see the big picture of the mental slavery. What, what is, uh, you know, what is, uh, Bob Marley talked, talked about that all the time, you know? Mental slavery. That's what it is. You think you're free, but you ain't, <laughs> you know? Your, your mind is enslaved by this shit that they're putting out there. It's coming through the TV, through the radio, through your computer, through your cell phone. Like, just quiet the mind. And I talk about mindfulness. I have a whole section in my new book right. about mindfulness. So important. Because people are doing shit, mindless shit. Like how do we be, go from mindless to mindfulness? You know, mindset is everything. You know, what all these people that get all this amazing shit done. It's like mindset is everything, man. Without that, you ain't you, you you're not even gonna get out the gate to start yeah and then you know i think to, to summarize what you're saying you gotta eat right to get your brain in the right place you gotta quiet yourself so you can tune into what thoughts of yours are, are toxic versus like that gratitude and understanding that that really spiritual side of it and then you gotta you know like you were saying visualize where you want to go and then serve others as part of that to kind of nourish your soul and and that's the path to to evolving. Yeah. Well, we're all in this together, man. That's, you know, that's the reality of the situation. So the, 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 the 
powers that be, their philosophy is divide and conquer. Exactly. As long as the people are at each other's throat, this asshole fucking in office or that asshole in office, like, fucking, I don't even try to talk no fucking politics. That shit is bullshit. Yeah. I mean, all, the, all that shit is designed to, to, to distract keep walls between us. You want a wall, motherfucker. Yeah, we know. You're building a great wall. Not even one brick I put in that wall on the border, but look at the walls he's already built. Yeah. Think about it. He has everybody hating each other. The fucking white supremacist motherfuckers are out there talking all their bullshit. People are buying into it. Oh, it's because of these brown people that our lives suck. Or these black people. Or this white person's getting all this and I can't get it. Everything's available to everybody. Remember that. Where there's a will, there's a way. All right. I read a whole story about this dude. And he said, oh, yeah, my wife left me this, that, all this shit was going on. He said, if my 17-year-old person met my 31-year-old person, right. that 17-year-old person would punch my 31-year-old person in the face. So think about it. You know, go after your shit and, you know, educate yourself. That's the main thing. You know, you could have all the money in the world. If you ain't got your health, you ain't got shit. Mental health, physical health, spiritual health, all three. So anyway. It's a nice place to, to tie it up. Um, yeah. Appreciate the time, the knowledge, and, you know, honestly, like how passionate you are and, and fully into making this world a better place. Uh, well, you know, I, you. I, I, I see, uh, I've seen both sides of it. I've been in the other world of hell, the prisons and the fucking drugs and the fucking abuse and all the other ugly shit that happens in this world. And I've seen the beautiful side of it. People helping each other, kind, compassion towards animals, compassion to each other. Sit down. Why you try to put down somebody who's fucking suffering and make his shit worse? Reach out and help somebody. Don't yep. try to fucking kick somebody when they're down. So, you know, that's, I guess i leave it at that. And if anybody wants to read a great book, this was the game changer for me, the science of self-realization. It's okay. not religion. It's cool. truth. We'll get, we'll get links to uh, the books yeah. you mentioned, the documentaries you mentioned, uh, your stuff too. Is it Pure PMA is your site? Uh, I don't even know what the fuck it is now. Um, I, don't, I have no fucking clue. Dude. Well, we'll have links when I share this, so, so don't worry about yeah, it. Just link with me on social media and, you know, John Joseph Cromag on Instagram and whatever the fuck. All right. All right. Thanks so much, man. All right, really appreciate ben. it. I'll let you know when this uh, is